After posting my five month review of the Steam Deck, there were a lot of people in the comments section that were recommending that I install Cryo Utilities 2.0. Well, I had no idea what Cryo Utilities 2.0 was. So as somebody like me that is not a power Linux user, I was a little bit worried as to whether or not I would able to successfully do this and not break my Steam Deck. But with a fresh SSD, I figured now would be a good opportunity to just install it, see how it runs, and whether or not somebody like me that isn't a power Linux user would be able to do it successfully. Turns out that this is actually really easy to do and it does not take that much time. In fact, if you aren't a power Linux user, you can follow along in this tutorial. And then from there, you can go ahead and start gaming. Before we get into the tutorial itself, huge shout out to Cryobyte33 for making this a success. I have links to his GitHub as well as his channel in the description below. Before before we move forward, I wanted to show you what's possible with Cryo Utilities 2.0. And as you can see, there is a significant amount of frames that are gained with just a couple of clicks. Once Cryo Utilities 2.0 is installed, it's actually relatively easy and seamless to just go right back into gaming just as you were before. Cryo Utilities 2.0 does nothing to actually increase the APU usage or to increase the fan curve speed or increase the TDP, for instance. All it really does is change the way that Steam and inevitably Linux handles the swap file system for your games. Before we actually install Cryo Utilities 2.0, we have to make sure that there's enough VRAM so that it can go ahead and run properly. In order to do that, you have to shut down the Steam Deck and then turn it back on with it going into BIOS. In order to do that, once you properly shut down your Steam Deck, you hold the plus or the volume up button and hold the power button until you hear a beep saying that it's posted. After that, let it go and eventually it'll go into your BIOS. Once you're in the BIOS, all you have to do is go into the setup utility. And then from there, you'll go into advanced. From advanced, you'll go to UMA buffer size. And this is where you can go ahead and change the amount of VRAM. Go to four gigabytes. From there, you can go ahead and exit. And once you hit exit, you can save the changes and it'll verify with you. Make sure that you hit yes. And after that, it'll go ahead and initiate a regular boot sequence. Before we go into installing Cryo Utilities 2.0, there's actually one more thing that we have to do, and we have to make sure that we run our device maintenance tasks. This is something that the Steam Deck does periodically from time to time, but doing this now will prevent it from happening later on when Cryo Utilities 2.0 is actually being installed. In order to find this, you have to go into the Steam menu, then go into settings, and then into the system. All the way down on the bottom, you're going to see something that says run storage device maintenance tasks. Go ahead and hit run. Run. And depending on how many games you have on the device itself or how many things you've been doing will affect how long this process takes. For me, it only took about five minutes, but apparently online, you can see anywhere between 10 or even 15 minutes for this to process entirely. Once this is done, then we have to switch over into desktop mode in order to install Cryo Utilities 2.0. In order to do that, all we have to do is hit the Steam menu button again, go all the way to power, and then go to switch to desktop mode. Now that we're in desktop mode, we have to set up a pseudo password. If you haven't done this already, the way to do this is to go into the applications launcher, which is the little Steam Deck logo in the bottom left-hand corner. Click that, go into system, and then from there, go into something that says console. This is essentially the terminal window for Linux. From there, all you have to do is type in the word P-A-S-S-W-D. Then you can go ahead and create a pseudo password. You can type whatever you want. It won't pop up into the terminal, but trust me, it's actually typing. Then it'll ask you to reconfirm the password. And once you reconfirm that password, that's it. Your password is set. Again, assuming that this is your first time in desktop mode, you're going to want to download a browser. There isn't one that is actually installed right from the get-go. In order to do that, you have to go into the Discover application. From there, you will click on Internet. Once that loads up, you'll go into web browsers and there's an array of web browsers that you can go ahead and download. Personally, I like to use Firefox. It's just my go-to when it comes to Linux. It'll go ahead and install. And once it's done and installed, all you have to do is click launch when you click into Firefox. 
once it's launched, a quick tutorial is going to pop up explaining just a little bit of Firefox and so on and so forth. You can literally just skip through it and then go into GitHub where you can download Cryo Utilities 2.0. On his GitHub page, CryoByte33 talks a little bit more in depth in terms of what exactly is happening in this application, but you can skip all that and go straight to the install button. From there, just right click, download this link and save onto the desktop. When you minimize the Firefox browser, the next thing that you'll do is look and see where your install cryo utilities application is at. Just find that, double click it, and from there a little window will pop up. Just hit continue, and then from there the application will start running. It will eventually go ahead and install three different things. You're going to have cryo utilities, as well as uninstall cryo utilities and finally the update cryo utilities. So this is all there. It's relatively very easy to do and very easy to find. Now you can go ahead and double click cryo utilities. There is going to be a little disclaimer that pops up. Just agree to the terms, but it is there if you want to read and see a little bit more information. That pseudo password that was made earlier, you can go ahead and put that in now. Once it's in, it'll give cryo utilities all the access that it needs in order to make the changes into the swap file system. So if you're a user like me, you don't really need to look at swap or memory or storage or vram frankly most users that don't want to tinker or mess with any of the settings that are here can just go with cryobyte 33's recommended settings which go ahead and just do everything that's needed for most use case scenarios just go ahead and click on that recommended button and once you click on that you can go ahead and initiate the process and that's it or at least so i thought I went and closed down the Cryo Utilities 2.0 window and returned back to gaming mode. The Steam Deck went ahead and rebooted just like it normally would, and I thought that was it. I was fine. I went and booted up Horizon Zero Dawn, thinking that I was going to see these major jumps. And honestly, I actually saw performance be a little worse. So I thought that maybe I had messed something up, that maybe this was something that was an issue. I went back into Steam Deck, went back into the desktop mode, and I started searching to see what it was that I did. I reverted Cryo Utilities back into the stock settings, and I rebooted my Steam Deck once again to see if something changed or maybe something improved or got worse. Who knew? Turns out that I had to go back into Cryo Utilities 2.0 and switch the recommended settings once again and then it was almost like magic. After that, I rebooted the system and everything was getting anywhere between five to 10 frames on average. There were a couple of times where the frame rate just went right back to where it was once before, but overall, it was a pretty smooth and seamless experience, guys. Even if you are a novice user of Linux like me, it's really easy to do, and I would recommend it to anyone and everyone that is a Steam Deck user that wants to squeeze just a little bit more juice out of their Steam Deck without having to overclock the APU, without having to worry or mess around with the TDP, or worry or mess around the fan curve. It's just very easy to do, and I can't recommend it enough. Guys, if you have this application on your Steam Deck, let me know what your thoughts are on it in the comments below, and are there any other things that you would recommend to install on a Steam deck to customize it to tweak it so that it goes and runs just how you like it let me know in the comments below and if you want to hear my review of the steam deck five months later then click this video over here if you want to hear my review of the steam deck versus every switch out there then click this video down here until next time guys i'll see you on the next one peace